All right, guys. Um, so this is my my favorite demos here because this is all everything combined together that we've just been talking about, basically all into one sort of like demo on literally how to draw. Um, so what we've been doing up until now is literally just drawing basic forms uh, and just trying to get those down and making those look perfect. And now we're at a point where um, we're going to take those forms and these things that we've been drawing and we're going to draw objects. We're going to draw actual still life every day cups, bowls, spoons, whatever, everything, things around your house that we can draw. Um, and this thing I've been talking about where we take a form and we another form, we stack these forms on top of each other and we hollow these out and do this and that, and we make objects. Uh, we're gonna start actually putting that into practice. Okay, so we should have talked about this in class and we probably talked about a few other objects in class and what forms this is made up of. So we would have said that this is made up of a cone. Right. We also would have said that these things up here are probably made out of a cube of some kind, because this is the problem with drawing and drawing three dimensional. We always look at things like this. New people who are new at drawing look at the flat silhouette of an object. They just see this as the shape that it is and not turned ever so slightly as the form that it is, because this has different sides to it. This is a one, two, three, four sided thing. This top piece, we talked about how that's actually a cube. And that's how you imagine these complicated shapes like that is if you imagine them as little rectangle, rectangular prisms and cubes, then you actually draw them better. This is the little cone sticking off the top of it, right? This guy right here is in itself another shape inside of what it would be a cylinder, but narrowed down into a cone, just like this is here. And that's what I'm gonna show you with this demo this time around, guys. So this is a really important thing to keep in mind. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna place this here, just so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening as I go. But I am going to kind of be drawing it at a slightly slanted tilt, just so that I can talk about sort of like seeing the three dimensions of an object, right? Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna start with an ellipse. I'm not actually going to start with a cone. I'm going to start the cylinder. What I just did right there is I marked the middle and I brought a straight line all the way up the middle there. And I'll show you here in a minute why I did that. And I'm going to bring the sides up here like a cylinder. Cylinder first, not cone. Okay, so let's look at the shape of this, right? We have right here, it turns into this sort of tapered shape right here. So watch this. I made this middle line as a guideline because what's going to happen is that we are going to taper in like this. And I'm using this visual space right here to see if I'm making this symmetrical. And then we're going to literally play connect the dots. Because there's a real struggle right there. I see all the time with students who are new at drawing is uh, how do I bring shapes in symmetrically towards the center point like this and actually make them look like they're the same. So see how I've got this visual representation of these shapes right here, of this inside space right here, is this space right here and all these little spaces equal. And if they are, then I know I'm doing this right. I'm gonna round this off a little bit more too. As I look at this, it's got like a big rounded bottom here. It's not so hard and sharp. And there we go. Now I'm gonna make another cylinder. So let's talk about what's happening right here, right? We've got this sort of change in the form. There's like this little lip right here and this little change right there. So I'm gonna make another ellipse. Every single time that we change the form that is elliptical or round, we have to draw another ellipse to get it started. Notice how I'm drawing transparently. I'm gonna erase some of that. So this bottle itself is pretty transparent. So I will probably leave this back angle on the bottom here, but this little part of the lid here is not very transparent. So I'm gonna erase that eventually, but I'm drawing it in right now just for the sake of trying to see the shape as a rounded object so that I get that form a little bit better. Uh, remember I talked about there's this little lip right here. I'm gonna create that by actually just adding another ellipse here before this sort of attaches to it. Notice how I'm ignoring all the details. I'm not trying to draw this thing down to the center right here. I'm not trying to draw all these little like lines and things here yet. I'm just paying attention to the shape of the form here, okay? So the next thing it does, if I look really closely, is that there's like this another lip and then it tapers in. So I'm gonna draw another ellipse and create just another cylinder stacked on top. And like I said, I'm drawing transparently. I'm drawing the tops of each of these objects because what I should be seeing hypothetically is this center line here that I created, it's kind of like, invisibly cutting through the center of all my new objects that I'm stacking to make this feel like it's actually stacked up tall and properly. This isn't perfect right now and I'm seeing that and as I go I can fix that. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to get these shapes on here first. 
and I will adjust and I'll shade and I'll erase and I'll do all that kind of stuff later. Okay, so now I have this guy here. I noticed he actually actually tapers in a little bit like this. So what this is he's gonna actually gonna need to look like is I'm actually gonna take this and round this off like this because the next thing I see is this sort of like weird sort of rounded shape. So I'm gonna build just another cylinder is what I'm gonna do. But when I get to the top of the cylinder, I'm gonna do that with it. And that's that shape right there. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this top portion here. Remember that I said to imagine this as like a cube. So I'm gonna imagine this like a cube is what I'm gonna do first. So it's like, comes off right here. And I'm not drawing this um, very proportionately at this moment. I'm kind of, I am trying to exaggerate things just a little bit to try to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now is this lip right here. So notice how this goes back like a cube. We learned something about drawing cubes and that is to make things look three-dimensional. So I'm gonna make this line right here and then I'm gonna send this back in the space like that. I'm gonna make an identical here. And then I'm gonna create this shape like this, right? Well, now we have to connect something to here. And then if we just make an identical mark like this, now we're starting to show the three dimensions of this form. This right here isn't a straight line. I just started as a straight line to help me with my form. It actually curves up, attaches like that to the back. And then this goes this way, right? Okay, so here's a problem that we run into sometimes, and this is gonna, I'm do, I do this kind of on purpose to show you something. So uh, here's this line right here, and here's this line right here. Notice how because of the angle I drew this line right here, I would have to show the top of this like this, right? Well, we know we're not seeing the top of it because of this angle that we did. So that means that I actually made that line incorrectly. So I wanted to show you guys that happening. So I made a proper square, but not the square that I'm seeing. This is actually pointing down. So it should have happened here. I wanted to do that so you could see me fix it, is that this angle is actually pointing like this, like that. And what I realized here is that this is like cutting halfway into this shape. So this should have met there. And this is why we draw sketchy like this. See, I'm making these mistakes here and I'm erasing. So you guys can kind of see me adjusting as I go and being like, oh, I get that. This goes here and that goes there. But because I'm drawing so loosely and light, like I taught you guys, it doesn't even matter. I can just erase real quick and fix my mistakes and move on from it. So now we've got that shape more correctly. And now we got to kind of solve a couple of the problems. Problem number one, adding a cylinder that looks like it fits on here. So see how I cap this off like this? That's so what I can do is if you have a, a square like this and you make an X through it, it finds the center for you. So there's the middle of my object. So I'm gonna draw an oval that fits so that that center right there is the center of my oval. And then now if I make a cylinder come off of that oval like this, it will look like it actually fits inside of it. And now what I did here isn't exactly what I see here because there's this skinny one and then there's this wide one on the outside. So what I was doing was I was trying to draw that skinny one first and then I will literally draw the wider one on top of it because that's how it is in real life. These, this little threaded part right here is literally what this is attached to. It's like I said, drawing is a lot more like sculpting than we realize. If we think of things three-dimensionally as they actually exist in space, that's how we get away with drawing them more realistically. I've even noticed that this actually shoots down at a much harder angle here too. Like this isn't so rounded. This is kind of more like this shape here. It's a little bit more of that. So I'm gonna fix that here too as I go. I'm still not drawing in perfect proportion because we're gonna talk about that a little bit later and I just kind of wanted you guys to see the forms. I'm exaggerating some of it just a little bit too because the three dimensional parts of this are what we're focusing on. I can even maybe start to add some detail. There's, here's those, those threads we were talking about here, right? Just add another ellipse for every single time I see one of those. And then the final piece is this little trigger. I'm drawing that part kind of a little bit more as a checkpoint. That's this guy right here. So that I can think about how this is gonna come out. So it comes out like this and then like this. And what I'm looking at here guys for proportion actually is this. So I see that this guy right here isn't any wider or longer than this is right here. So I'm kind of looking at the space right there to kind of help me with this one. And from this angle, I am seeing the front of it. 
right? So to make this look three-dimensional, add another side right there. And then I add that angle to make that look a little bit squared. And then I should erase that because this is in front of that piece right there. So this is just a construction here too. And I'm seeing this little tube right here. That's just another cylinder. Like this is the beginning of getting this form out here. Like I said, uh, proportion wise, it's not perfect, but form wise, we're nailing it. We're getting all the forms exactly the way these forms look. After I'm done with this is when I would come through and actually erase all this that isn't transparent or isn't a part of it, this middle line, all this stuff here, this can go away. I want to start focusing on this little piece that actually comes down through the tube. I could do that now, shows up after this and it kind of just goes like this. It is literally just a cylinder with a little wider cylinder attached at the bottom. I'm gonna erase this outer edge that we started that cylinder with because it's not a part of our thing anymore. And we can erase these other pieces here that we use to kind of help shape this form. At this point, we should be getting a pretty close thing. But like I said, um, I wasn't completely focused on proportion because I was kind of trying to talk to you a little bit more about the forms that we're using here. So this could be a time where you can maybe erase and adjust and kind of change these things. Uh, but this is a pretty, uh, pretty good representation of trying to control the forms to make something look a little bit more three-dimensional, right? And remember that even though these are crazy organic shapes, like this thing here that I'm messing with, even though this is like super organic, right? Uh, it's not, I mean, really it's a cube. It's just a cube, right? That we, cause we know how to draw a cube, you know, you do this and then you do this and that draw, that creates a cube, right? And then all we did to create this shape was we saw that cube actually goes like this and inside of that shape, there was just this cube that bend and curved it still has one, two, three sides to it. We just see them now as this shape or this form right here. All right, I know that you're seeing this and it always happens in class. Like this makes sense to most students when you see it. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, I get that. Like I saw what you just did, but you feel a little bit of a disconnect on how do I actually make that happen though? Like how do I, what do I do next if I can or can't do this thing? Um, I don't expect all of you guys to be masters of this in the first try, but what we're gonna do as your assignment in class is you're going to pick an object in your room or from the objects that I post on the classroom. If you pick it from your room, you have to show it to me. If you pick one that's from the classroom, then you just have to pick one of those and you can just use one of those objects, okay? I say that you have to show it to me to make sure that it's an actual complicated object because no, an iPhone is not more than just a cube itself. I want a combination of at least two different forms on your object. Like your object shouldn't just be a really simple, like it's just a cone. It should be something with another thing on top of it or in some way, shape or form, the shape or the form is different. So those are things that are important about it. You can see that what I'm doing here at the end of my talk here was just like adding these other little details that I said weren't as important. But now that my form is solid, I can care more about these details here. And then this thing starts to become much more of the shape or the form that we are talking about here. And you can see me here, I'm even adding a little bit of like value because that's another thing that we will talk about as we go through this class that helps for a form. You do not need to add value at all. Yours just needs to be a pencil line sketch of whatever complicated still life form you've selected. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you.